Amen, amen, amen. What is going on with my screenshot here? Amen. We're here on the Morning Devo with Brother DJ Sam Rock. It's a blessing to have you with us over here in the studio. Amen. As I um, fix this shot here, things suddenly move in my studio lately. Amen. So not only do things move in my studio, but the Word of God moves all the time. Amen. In the hearts of every single believer who chooses to put their trust and hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. So welcome to the Morning Devo. My name is Sam Lopez, a.k.a. DJ Sam Rock, and you are on the Morning Devo. I try to do these Mondays through Fridays, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Amen. Um, and today, I just want to let you know, because we're ending the year. I want, you know, we're ending the year. And to a lot of people, we're ending the year strong. To a lot of people, they've been struggling until this very day. I just want to encourage you that the Bible that we read, right, whether you read it in English or you read it in Hebrew, the Bible that we read is reliable, trustworthy. How do I know and how can I prove it? I could just say this, that when I put my faith and hope in Jesus, right, he gave me what we Christians call Holy Spirit God to live within us and to remind us of everything that God has done in our lives through his word, through our testimony. Amen. And then he starts downloading. It's like a download into our soul, into our very being, his living word. And then when you speak his living word out from the scriptures, I'm not talking about a self-help book. I'm not talking about anything like that. I'm talking about the Bible, B-I-B-L-E, basic instructions before leaving earth. When you put his word, God's word in action, things happen. His word happens. The Bible is alive sharper than any double-edged sword, and his word is able to do whatever his word is set to do. Whatever God sets his word to do, he will do it through his word. So I only have you know a couple of minutes to share this, but I figured let me share this before the year is over because a lot of people are struggling in this area what to believe. So many distractions. With the world full of distractions, uh, if you haven't noticed the distractions, let me remind you, we are distracted in this world. We're being thrown with all type of different things and ideas, a lot of voices going in and out of our minds, right, into our ear gate. And then we're filling our heart with all kind of things other than scripture sometimes. So we're filling our hearts with worry, anxiety, jealousy, rage, violence, sex, alcohol, party life. We're filling our hearts with all that stuff. We're reading books, novels, we're watching um, movies that all promote those things. And then we're wondering why when we read the scripture, we're like, that can't be true. And to me, the Bible is the most honest book you could ever read. So honest. It tells you about God. It tells you about man. It tells you about the heart of man. It tells you about sin. It tells you about wickedness, goodness, faith, hope, mercy, grace, stories of war, rumors of war, um, famines. Right? Uh, it talks about pandemics, what they call plagues in the scriptures. So I don't understand how I used to think. Let me just talk to myself. I used to think that the Bible was a fantasy, mythology. It was made up. But then when I had an encounter with the God of the Bible, then I had a big problem on my hands. I started realizing that what the word was saying has been true all along. What God's word says has been true. It's happening. It's happening now. With the, how could something that was written so long ago have relevance to what's happening right now? That's the Bible. That's the word of God. So in a little time we have today, I just want to put this in your mind by way of morning Devo. And I, yeah, I have a, a cut on my head. I sliced my, my head while I was shaving um, in three different spaces. It reminded me of the Kung Fu movies I used to watch with the monks in Shaolin, right? And the only thing is, it's in different locations. So I kind of shaved my head off almost for good, right? And I got holes now, um, patches in my forehead and my head and stuff like that. That's why you see that. It's not a camera glitch. <laughs> it's really um, what I did to my head with a, a razor that was cheap, cheap razor. Don't use cheap razors while you're shaving and you're bald, okay? So let me just go to the title here so that way I won't mess things up. Okay, and hopefully you're getting the notifications. I don't know if I'm still on this whole shadow band thing. And um, 
Yeah, so I have to change the title on the social. But it's called Bible Believer. And I don't know why it didn't update on my um, my end over here. But Bible Believer. And how we can know that the Bible is trustworthy. Amen. How the Bible is trustworthy. Amen, Brother Rich. Thank you so much for coming by last night um, where Brother Angel was with us. And uh, thank you. Yeah, it was a joy. And to participate and thank you for your participation, brother. It's always a good thing to have you. Amen. And let me change something really quick. I don't understand why uh, my why my title and everything did not update, which is a little strange, right? Um, you probably don't know what I'm talking about. It's one of those things that if I don't change it now, it will bother me for the rest of the day. So let me just change a couple of things here. And if it's here, I'm going to, yeah, it's here. Just didn't change on my stream. It's, uh, that's strange. How do you, hmm, interesting. Interesting enough, ladies and gentlemen, how these things happen. But it's called Bible Believer. And my comment is, or question is, why I trust, or I want to answer, or try to answer a snapshot of this question of why I trust the Bible to be the secret to living a satisfying life. I believe with all my heart that people are looking for satisfaction. They want to be satisfied in this life that we're living right now. Because what sense would it make for us to have satisfaction on the other side? Well, while we're here among other brothers and sisters, while we're here among other human beings, people are looking for satisfaction now. And that's where the war is in our in our minds. What is the definition of satisfaction to you? What's the definition of satisfaction to me? That could be a big thing, a big deal, right? People want satisfaction. Let me see if, if I save it again, what happens. All right. Don't know why um, my... I'll fix that later on. So Bible Believer right here in the Morning Devo with your brother Sam Lopez, a.k.a. DJ Sam Rock. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, don't hesitate. Listen, don't hesitate to connect. We had a great light night last night on the Bible study uh, with guest um, Andrew Santos. And um, like Brother Rich said, it was a great time of joy um, to participate and watch as people were a- asking questions and we were trying to just have a, a time of discussion live, right? It's not easy when you're doing that live, but Holy Spirit God moves in those lives. Um, good morning. We should do a show on what the best razors to use when shaving will be. Uh, yeah, it's true. It wasn't the, and it is expensive razor blades and it's still, I don't know what happened, man. It was a bad, it was a bad, um, ball day for me, um, last week. So anyway, <laughs> that's funny. So let's do this. If you want the full experience of what's happening on these morning devos, the Bible studies, the blaze, um, go to live that so is with a z.org. Where is it? Right here. Live that so is with a z.org. Go to that website right there. And it's um, no distractions on that website. I made it that way for sure. And before this year is over, please answer this question. Did you give your life to Jesus? The most important question you could ever ask or try to answer, actually, I should say. This year, before this year is over. Time is not waiting for no one, if you haven't noticed that already. Time doesn't wait for anybody. Uh, Whether you're a Christian or not, time is still going. Amen? And the quicker, right, or the sooner you get this question resolved in your life. Did you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth? The Bible, the biblical Jesus. Scan that QR code. Find out for yourself. For yourself. It's not going to be a debate over there or nothing like that. It's just going to be something for you to realize, to think about, to ponder, right, and to understand. Hopefully, um, God will speak to you through that resource that I made specifically to answer that question. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, and again, I don't know what's going on with my shots here. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for everything that you have done in my life and everything you continue to do because your word is true. I pray I had your protection over myself and my family and those that are connected, them and their families as well, their whole bloodline. I pray, Lord God, that your word will be a reality to those who think the word is not true, to those who think the Bible is mythology, that you, Lord God, will do the convincing and the convicting and the revealing of your word to every single person who is a skeptic or every single person who needs a recharge of faith. I'm a believer in your word, Lord God, and there's so many more believers in your word because we can trust and know that your word is true. 
because of our life experience according to your scriptures, according to your word, and how we put your word and we speak your word out of our very own mouths to see your word in all its power to prove itself true. I thank you, Lord God, for today. And I thank you for every single person that's going to connect now and is going to watch on a replay. I pray by faith that your Holy Spirit will move the hearts of every single individual to a place of repentance, a place of renewal, a place of restoration, a place of redemption, a place of born againness, if that's a word, Lord. And I thank you, Lord God, that you are able um, to prove who you are through your scriptures. And we need not debate of who you are and what you have, have done and what you continue to do. In Jesus' name, I pray this by faith. Amen and amen. So let's go for it. Let's take a minute to share this out. And when we come back, uh, we'll be um, just discussing why I believe the Bible to be true. The Word is an ongoing, living, remodeling agent of God in our lives. Yes, for sure. And there's never a time, and there's never a way, there's never a point of God's Word where it's not true. And it doesn't contradict itself like so many smart, so called smart people say that the word contradicts amen never does and even if you make the word try to contradict um you'll find that you were in error not god's word is in error god's word is never in error amen yes lord let your word be true and every man be a liar not one word will fall to the ground or come back void amen that's the word of god too as well so let's take a minute when we come back we're going to dive right into a couple of scriptures really quick amen and i want to make sure on that the first scripture is first peter 1 um, and verse 21 okay so i'll be right back Amen, amen. Let's get into this first scripture. And all my shots are changed. That's amazing. Amen. So listen, 1 Peter 1, this is the Amplified Version. The Bible says, 1 Peter 1, verse 21, And through him you believe confidently in God, the Heavenly Father, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are centered and rest in God. We only could get that from the scriptures. Every other, let's see, holy book out there relies on its own word. Our Bible, the word of God, we know to be know it to be true because God doesn't need us to believe in him. Let me explain. There's other religions out there that they need to rely on whatever book they have to be true. And when they find error, and they will find error, they try to mask it or disguise it or maybe take it out. But we have in the Bible the unchanging word of God. And the word of God is the will of God. So it's unchanging. So if God said a thing, it is a thing. There's nothing that could stop God's word from doing what God intends his word to do. So we have in our hands, in the Bible... Amen. In a Christian Bible, 66 book Bible, we have in our possession the will, the mind of God. And I dare to say that everything that's written in the scriptures that we know of in the Bible is not all of God. It's not all of God. I dare to say that. But I will say this. When you read the scriptures, what happens? We change. We start realizing that the word of God is in us working through us, for us. And when we speak the word of God, things happen to the glory of God. First Peter 1, 21, uh, through Christ. Amen. Thank you for putting that up. Thank you so much. 
Also, let's see. Let's go to the second scripture here. And I'm going to give you a couple of reasons why I believe this. John 6, John chapter, no, excuse me, John chapter 8, verse 31. John chapter 8, verse 31. So Jesus was saying to the Jews who had believed him. So there were some Jews that believed in him. If you abide in my word, if you abide in my word, if you abide in the Bible, in the scripture, which is God's word, continually obeying my teachings and living in accordance with them, then you are truly my disciples. If I ever try to leave out the word of God out of my life and go around saying I believe in him, you are automatically going to know that I'm not being real. I'm not being real with what I believe in. I'm not being real with who I believe in. And I'm not being dedicated to being a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. But in the scriptures, Jesus, the living word of God, told his own people, the Jews, that if you abide in his word, he said, in my word. So Jesus is saying that word that you read, the Torah, right? That word that you know about Moses and the commandments and all that. He said, if you abide in my word, that's the Lord's word, continually obeying my teachings and living in accordance with them, then you are truly my disciples. I believe 100% in discipleship. I don't understand uh, where this whole sinner's prayer thing came from. That once you say a specific prayer and you really are sincere about that prayer, then you're done, you're a disciple, you're, you know, you're born again. Don't know where it came from. All I know is that once you do say that prayer, if you do want to say the prayer of salvation, you know, admitting that you are a sinner and that you need Jesus to come and save you and forgive you for your sins and save you, then he'll send you the promised Holy Spirit. And then you're going to go around confessing the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior because he's doing a transformation in your life. If you do it that way, I believe, you know, you're, you're engaging God. But if you're not reading his word, you're not going to know who he is. Right, you're gonna be in some kind of religion, some kind of cult, some kind of process that's not really helping. Amen. That's the long way around things. Actually, saying that prayer, the the way to the Lord, Amen, could be different ways. I'm not saying many roads lead to the same God. I'm saying you could come to God in a different. I came to God drunk and high. Some people came to God through a church service. Some people came to God uh, through a dream. Some people came to God uh, from a life threatening situation. Like how many testimonies have you heard that people who are on their deathbed or getting wheeled into the hospital is speaking to God through their mind because they can't speak through their mouth because they probably have oxygen masks or whatever. And they're saying, God, if you get me out of this situation, if you make me healthy again, I'm going to search you out. I'm going to seek you out. I'm going to serve you. And they wake up and into a place where they're, they're delivered, they're saved, they're rescued, and then they start serving the Lord. But it seems like or well, this is my imagination, the ones that stay with the Lord are the ones who read his word. They don't just say that they're believing in God. They're reading the word of God. I believe, I'm a Bible believer because every time I read the scriptures, every single time, it's not one time that I don't get a revelation or I shouldn't even say a revelation. It's not one time that I don't get something new out of the scriptures. I could read John 3.16 a million times and still get something out of that scripture. And that's one of the basic and most um, sought out scriptures as a Christ follower. Amen. That a lot of people know John 3.16. Even unbelievers know John 3.16. People who don't believe in Christ. So I could read it a million times and I'll get something new. That's why I'm like, this is an incredible word. The Bible, the reason why I'm a Bible believer, and I hope you become a Bible believer too before this year's over, is that when you read his word, the author is present with you every single time you read his word. The Bible is the only book on this whole entire planet that every time you open the pages, the author and finisher and perfecter of our faith is right there with us. You might think that's space age or new age or craziness. Do it. Try it for yourself. The word of God, when I confessed it out of my mouth, way back when I first got saved, I confessed the, the word out of my mouth. I literally saw the power of God's work and his word work in my life. I'm the test. I know um, what I tested in God's word and his scripture. Amen. The ultimate test was a life change. I said, well, God, this is your challenge. This is how I got saved. I was drunk and high. I don't suggest this. I'm not endorsing this. This is just the way I, my testimony, how I came to God. I was drunk and high and I said, God, you need to change me by tomorrow morning. If you don't change me by tomorrow morning, I'm out. 
basically in a nutshell, that's what I was challenging God with, as if I could challenge God. But he saved me. He rescued me that very next morning because of his grace and mercy. And you know what he did? He took me straight to his scripture. So I had to start memorizing certain scriptures in the Bible in the very beginning or else I would have went back to my old way of thinking right away. So I'm a Bible believer. I believe in the word of God to be true. And it will set you free. The word of God is that powerful. The word of God is that powerful. And there's miracles in the word of God. There's power in the word of God. There's evidence in the word of God. There is relevance in the word of God. Um, There's healing in the word of God. There's so much more. We can't imagine anything greater than what the word of God speaks in our lives. Amen. I can't imagine anything greater. I can't make anything up like the word of God. So I hope I did some convincing. I hope the Holy Spirit did some convincing in your life. Amen. I can't prove to you everything in the scripture because I'm not the God of the scripture. I'm the one who reads the word of God and relies and trusts in the one who inspired men to write down the words. I don't have to debate about that. Amen. Nor do I have the time to repent or to make a confession of belief in your heart for salvation is the baby step into being now and registered student, a new and registered student, I guess you meant, in God's school. He is our teacher. We are the students. Now we have to be transformed by a renewed mind to change the way we think. The battle is right here, is in the mind. Thank you, Brother Rich. So I'm out of here. I know it was short. I started a little later than usual, but hopefully you'll connect with what the Word of God was trying to say to us today. So God bless you all. God keep you all. Remember always that God is good and stay in His Word because His Word is true. Peace.